what do you think are red flags to you in relationship? Hmm, we have a lot of questions. When I feel like my friend can't go all out for me. Personally, I do not believe so much in parasitic relationships. Okay. A lady that doesn't have a plan for financial stability and does not have value for money. They put the needs of his family above yours. There's something called balance. Get also so soaked, soaked or, or absorbed in our own selves that we don't realize sometimes that what the talk actually the red flag. Oh, actually. <laughs> this is our own opinion we get. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're just seeing my face for the first time, my name is Chisoma KK and I'm a Nigerian YouTuber based in Abuja. And if you're a returning subscriber, hey my darling, welcome back to my channel, okay? So in this video, we have a guest. <laughs> we have a guest, I have to bring a guest. You guys know, I started this girl talk series and my first guest was Emil, so now we have another guest. And you guys said I should bring it back, so I brought it back and I'll allow my guest to introduce herself to you guys. Hi there, my name is Chidi Green. I'm a property consultant and also a transformational coach, a faith-based transformational coach. I'm so excited and I, I can't wait for you guys to, you know, enjoy this video because we have a lot. I asked most of you to ask me questions on um relationship what you guys think um, are red flags to you in relationship and i got a lot of questions and i want her to you know give her input on some of them because i feel like she has more experience than me so i wanted her to you know come and give what she thinks and say what she thinks on most of what you guys ask so we'll just get right into the video right okay we have a lot of questions i asked what is you know what do you think are red flags to you in relationship and i got a couple so the first person said when i feel like i said both in relationship and in friendship so okay. it's, it's something so the first person said when i feel like my friend can't go out all out for me when i can do everything for them and they can't go all out for me i feel like that's you know um a red flag so what do you think do you think it's it's a red flag Okay, so I think it actually is because personally, I do not believe so much in parasitic relationships. I feel like if you're giving, you should be receiving. So no one deserves to be at the receiving end alone and then another yeah. person at the giving end. There should be this, um, you know, you're receiving and giving and then the other person is receiving and giving. That way it makes the relationship or friendship really balanced and then nobody is being used. Everybody gives and everybody receives. Okay, that's okay. That's, that's this one's from a guy. Okay. A lady that doesn't have a plan for financial stability and does not have value for money. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the thing with red flags is, in as much as something poses as a red flag, it can also be improved on. You know, being able to or being um, being financially, you know, um, literate also falls back to your background, and then there are a lot of determinants. So for someone who comes from a family where they didn't have the privilege of learning about money, might grow up not knowing anything about money except for, you know, the casual information they get here and there on social media or blogs. And I love to use myself as an example when it comes to the issue of money. I got married three years ago and I literally knew nothing about investing. I, I was clueless about saving. I was just a spender. So, and then I happen to get married to someone who is who happens to be very conscious about money. He talks about investment. He's an economist. So along the line, when he noticed, and it was causing real issues for us, it was causing real issues. So we had to talk about it. And then he started teaching me. He bought me books on, on, on finance. He, you know, we saw um, YouTube, YouTube videos, we would see YouTube videos and, you know, make analysis. He started talking more about investment, savings. And then it got to a point where he literally had to make me start saving our family's money. So he would intentionally put it in my account. Yeah. So that way, it also helped me build confidence. And then there was now a consciousness that whatever money you get, a part of it should be saved. And then also you invest. And that was how I learned everything I know about, you know, being financially literate. And I kept on improving myself. So some things, you can also help your partner, you know, learn some things. A lot of people are not privileged to, to assess the kind of information you as a person have. So if it's something that is that one can learn and the person is willing to learn, yeah, yeah. you should also, you know, help them out in that aspect. Somebody said, when the person derives ut utmost joy to not communicate whatever is going on. Okay. So communication is key in a relationship. 
you know the reason why a lot of people have issues in marriage or in relationship is because there's usually a bridge in communication and we all have different ways we prefer to communicate so for someone who doesn't want to communicate the first question is why do they not want to communicate are they always being judged whenever they try to express themselves you know do you is there always a misunderstanding because if someone tries to talk to you and you pick offense or you try to pick on them or you use it against them there's a tendency for them to not want to talk to you you know about certain about issues something. so another question you should ask yourself is how do i handle our communication and if you check and you know that this person is just someone who doesn't like to communicate for instance i prefer to talk about my grievances if i'm not happy i prefer to talk about it my partner on the other hand can get angry and just decide to stay silent and it used to be an issue for me but what I've learned is just allow people for the moment and after a while you guys can trash out your issues and find better ways to communicate. So do you think it's a red flag? It depends if it's now, you know, a case where the person is not willing to change, you've had conversations. Because at the long run, if you end up with someone who doesn't love to communicate and is not willing to learn, it becomes an issue because there will always be problems yeah, in the family. Yeah. So someone said, I see this as a red flag when my opinions are always hushed and my idea is belittled. Okay. <laughs> okay, nobody loves to feel, you know, not wanted. Nobody loves to feel like the, their opinions do not matter. And if you're in a relationship and you do that to your partner, it's actually very wrong. No matter how intelligent you feel you are, and no matter how, you know, less intelligent you feel your partner is, even when they're not making sense, just let them express themselves. Okay. Just let them talk. And then there are ways to also push people wow. without making it look so rude. Don't just shush them and then make them stop. Because at the end of the day, even if they're not very, you know, they don't communicate so well or you don't understand the way they communicate, there's still sense in what they're making. And if you still feel there's no sense, there are ways to go about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a particular red flag for me. Okay. The way you express your anger, mm -hmm. if it makes me feel unsafe. Mm -hmm. First of all, I'm going to tell you, no hitting, no unnecessary shouting, no verbal abuse or whatsoever. You know, when people get angry, to an extent, that is when you know they are true nature. Yes. And if you're in a relationship and someone expresses themselves in a very violent way, I think you might really need to be careful because that is a very, it is a red flag for me as a person. Yeah, people communicate different ways, and I just like yeah. I said, people's and um, response to situations also you know, as a result of sometimes past trauma experiences backgrounds and all but the more you grow and then you see that you're ready the way you respond to things doesn't really sit well with the person you're in a relationship with you should make an effort to change yeah and abuse is not just when somebody hits you when somebody uses abusive words on you that's verbal abuse and then when somebody tries to gaslight you, that's emotional abuse. We have a lot of gaslighting. Okay, so a lot of times people just relegate this thing to hitting. When mm -hmm. someone shouts unnecessarily, you need to check it because from shouting, it gets to another, an advanced level where, you know, the person begins to physically abuse you. So it's also a red flag for me. This one. <laughs> when they put the needs of your family, of his family above yours, I can understand it's his family and mm -hmm. all, but you know, I need him to consider me as well. Okay. What do you think? Do you think it's a red flag? So, of course it's his family. Of though, course so it's his family. What do you well, think? There's something called balance. Balance. I mean, there's no room for competition. It's not a competition. We're not dragging anything. Your family is your family. They are a priority. I, on the other hand, am your partner and there's also a priority. Yeah. So whoever the person is needs to strike a balance. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. So whatever you know, you know, you can always place a balance. You can take care of your family, not at the expense of your partner. Mm -hmm. You can also take care of your family, not at the expense of your family. So there should be a balance. Mm -hmm. Take care of your family, take care of your, you know, the person you're in a relationship with. Don't make one feel wanted and the other not wanted. Mm -hmm. This one has like five, <laughs> <laughs> this person has like five red flags. Okay. Over controlling behavior, Okay. lack of trust low self-esteem mm. physical emotional mental we've talked about that okay. narcissism mm. anger management issues i think we've talked about that codependency okay so before i give an answer to that one thing i really want to point out is sometimes you know we get also 
soaked, soaked, soaked or or absorbed in our own selves that we don't realize sometimes that what the topic actually is. The red flag. You're actually, you're actually, actually the red flag. You get so I mean, means, you know, trying to look out for red flag. You should first of all do an inner work. That's something I do all the time. Have conversations with yourself. Yeah. Am I the one bringing out all of these things in people? Am I the toxic one? And if the answer is no, then we can start, you know, addressing, addressing. all of these things. Yeah. But I think he mentioned um what's one of the things you over controlling behavior, lack of trust. Over controlling is the red flag. Nobody should want to control. I mean, you've not finished controlling yourself. <laughs> How do you want to now start controlling and that person? Lack of trust too. Mm-hmm. But you know, in the issue of lack of trust, it also it also depends on certain factors mm. sometimes the things we do make people lose trust in us yeah but if it's a situation where generally because there are some people who never Just get to trust people trust issues and that yes. could also be as a result of past experiences you also need to talk about it so if someone doesn't trust you learn to tell talk to the person if the person doesn't change then you can you can escalate it or do whatever you yeah, want well, i think this was you know it was trending one time someone said telling me that i'm not the most beautiful or intelligent <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so by telling is it like when we're together or when it's on social media? <laughs> yeah. Because but, I, I think this is talking from the yeah, yeah, yeah. saga. The truth is, you cannot be the most beautiful girl, but there's something about being appreciated. I am not the most beautiful girl. Chisome is not the most beautiful girl, and every other girl, I mean, they said beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. But, but my partner, when it comes to my partner, see, I try to be very realistic. Okay. You know, there's something I always say. It's not like I've not seen men that are finer than my husband. Yeah. But there are qualities he has that I have not found in other people. And those are the things I learned to appreciate. Mm-hmm. So I feel like in relationship, we should try to, you know, we should try to focus more on the person's strength. You're not the most beautiful girl. Don't, don't you know, don't get angry. That is actually a fact. But does that mean he loves you less? No. He can actually say you're not the most beautiful girl. It might just also be a joke. But in a case where he's serious, he too needs to be careful because mm-hmm. we love to hear good things, you know. No, yes. we, this is how we are na- so naturally. We're naturally, wired to, yes. you know, the things we hear, yes. the things we hear. You know, there are different um, gates to the soul of a person. There, there's the ear gate, the eye gate. For the men, it's, they use more of the eye gate. For the women, it's the ear yes. gate. Yes. So if your woman loves to hear she's the most beautiful girl, I mean, it wouldn't hurt you to tell her that. If it brings peace to the relationship, yeah. but you to just know that he's whining you because you're actually not the most beautiful <laughs> girl. So let it just be that you're cruising, and then at yeah. the back of your mind, and then I think the lady too needs to build some form of self confidence and esteem. Awareness. Get to a point where you know that it's not all about the beauty, whether you're the most beautiful but, girl. But or... in this case, see, we know what happened. Where it was like, oh, you're not the most beautiful. Mm. You're not the most, and there was a lot of yeah. attack on that. But was he wrong? No. I think also when we say things like this, we should also people try to take out the context from what situations like this. Yeah. Yes, I I know what this story is, and I think I read it. Even though he was, I, I felt he was a bit too forward, but he wasn't wrong. She's not the most beautiful girl. I mean, we know girls who are more beautiful, mm-hmm. but I think he was trying to pass a point. You're not the most beautiful girl, and I didn't marry because you're. I'm not getting married to you because you're so beautiful. But there are certain things I really appreciate in you as a person. Okay. So I think I feel it's it's not so much of a big deal. But if it's a red flag for your woman, I mean, tell her she's the most beautiful girl yeah. for you to have peace of mind. Okay. Yes. What is said when he has a female bestie <laughs> and is still in strong communication with his ex? This is actually a red flag. It is a red bestie. Yeah, like even the female bestie, you know, there should be boundaries. There should be boundaries. When people address issues like this, they tend to insinuate that the lady is insecure. It's not like that most of the times. Not like that. I mean, women love territory. We love to know that this is our, this is our zone. zone. And then for a lady to complain about your female best, she must have seen one or two things. And even if she must not have, as long as you people are in a relationship and she's yeah. uncomfortable, I think I think women will, have inner eyes. Yes, they have just yes. this thing that they I think know. it will do you well to just you know establish some boundaries and also try to affirm her. But the part of always keeping in touch with your ex guy, you need to stop. Yeah, need and then to. if she doesn't like it, she doesn't like it. And don't try to impose people. I you know I see situations where you try to make your woman be friends with your ex or your female friends. If she doesn't like them, leave her alone. Yeah. You don't try to put people in a space that she doesn't, she doesn't appreciate, appreciate doesn't very well and also establish boundaries. Yeah. Okay. Somebody said dressing. 
to me, I, I see indecent dressing and seductive dressing as a red flag. <laughs> and when it's not a target to me, mm. or when I'm not the target. target. Okay. So people differ. Yeah, this, I think this one differ. is subjective. I know men who would not tolerate it. I mean, they have these conversations. They are sitting with. They're not trying to control you. Yeah. But I think it's, because it's they so built a reputation and then they they have this, you know, their values they have and cannot compromise. So I think it's something they need to have a conversation. I mean, if you meet a girl who dresses in a certain way and you consider indecent, leave her alone. There are guys who appreciate her the way she is. Yeah. If yes. you see a girl who is more Don't try to change. Yes, who a girl who is more, you know, who prefers to be more you know, put together, put together and all. Like and then you think that's your spec, go for her. Leave the one that prefers to, just like you said, in your own words, yeah. seductive dressing. A guy appreciates her that way. But from my own I, I don't want to use myself as but I feel like what you don't appreciate, other people don't, appreciate. Yeah, it's true, it's true. But usually, I think generally, it's also advisable for everybody to. There's something called modesty. You can also look good and all, and you know, still be modest. Yeah. Yeah, we're having a conversation the other time, and I was trying to explain something. There's something the Bible talks about. You know, the Bible talks about blemish, talks about wrinkles, talks about spots. So these are three categories. If you want to relate them to marriage or relationship, three categories of of things people deal with or issues people deal with. There's something called spots. A spot. If you have a stain on your shirt, it is spots. Detergents can remove it. Yeah. If you have a wrinkle, wrinkles are not something one is born with. It's as a result of you know old age. So there's a determinant factor as to why people have wrinkles. So that one one has little or no control over it. Yeah. But you know, you just need to know that people come from places where they've had past experience, and there are some things that along the line they just cannot avoid but fall into. Yeah. You know, and then there's something called blemish. That one, there's nothing the person can do about it. So if you're going into a relationship, it's advisable for all of the things that I turn off for you. Know which one is a spot, one that can be worked on, mm-hmm. deliberate work and take it out. Know which one is a blemish. Know which one is a wrinkle. So when you try to put your issues or the things you don't like about this person in all of these categories. It's also help you know if you're supposed to be in this relationship, if this is something you can work on. If it's something the person cannot work on, like something yeah. that is hereditary, maybe the way the person talks, the way the person acts, Act, leave yeah. them alone. If you know they are not, you have issues with them, just let the person be. Someone else will appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's Somebody cool. said, this is a proper red flag for me when you don't support me and you have too many complaints. Okay. Is it um, financial support? Because we have different forms of support. I feel like maybe my, I feel maybe well, this one is my goals, my mm-hmm. dreams. When you don't support that, you know, there are some people that just don't know mm-hmm. how to, don't know sure what to say to you. Yes. Your number one, Shelly, that should be your partner. Should be your partner. I, I it's see. going to be an issue if you end up with somebody who doesn't support you. You know, some people are just carefree. So sometimes, even when you achieve something, I try to tell them they're not so excited. Mm, and they feel like it's not just... It's different that... if it's a personality thing. I mean, the person can learn. Yes. Like, the person I'm married to is not, is not easily excited about things. So, but when you know that the person you're in a relationship with loves to be appreciated, loves to... I mean, it wouldn't hurt to learn how to be, be intentional. Actually. Relationship is... You inten- it demands intentionality. Mm-hmm. If this is what the person loves, as long as it's not to the detriment of your own well-being, mm-hmm. I mean, do it for them. That's right. <laughs> okay. Somebody said this phrase: "As a woman, you're supposed to." Mm-hmm. Is a red flag for her. Okay. You know, maybe all these you know constructs. Stereotypes. Yes. Stereotypes. Societal. So. Yes. Societal stereotypes never helps any relationship. Yeah. So relationships should be, you know, should be personal. Relationships are actually personal. A woman is supposed to, for one person, might not be another person, a woman is supposed to. Mm-hmm. There are some men that are fine with their wives not cooking. I mean, we can always find alternatives. There are men that can afford to, that are more um, domesticated, that can yeah, afford to can. wash dishes, cook, and all. Yeah. Relationship is 100% personal. It's not based on what, what social media is saying. Or what from somebody another, else Because the other one doesn't help his wife out in the kitchen. No, a woman is supposed to. You too, a man is supposed to. <laughs> so there's there, there are actually gender roles, but I mean, there's also room for being flexible and helping your partner. If a yeah. woman, like there are some things you cannot really take away. A woman is supposed to give birth to a child, get pregnant, yeah. but a man too can actually step in and, you know, also be supportive in all through that journey. Yeah. 
a woman is supposed to do this but you too can also in yeah. an attempt to support your partner replace that this thing so let's not live by gender roles and stereotypes those yeah. things are are what as far as i'm concerned destroy relationships and marriage <laughs> to the end of this yeah you know, please let's give a disclaimer because most times when you say things like this you know everybody has their own opinion mm. so this is our, our own opinion we get you can tell us your own opinion mm. in the comment our own section. point of view this is our point of view yeah. yeah so you can tell us your own point of view in the comment section if mm. you do not agree to something you can just tell us i, I think mrs green will be in the comment section to answer okay <laughs> she'll be in the comment section to answer because she did most of the talking and i brought her because of her experience and all that so yeah i'll see you guys in my next video do not forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe to our channel and look out for mrs green's podcast i have been i have been i have said a lot of things so far i like i enjoy listening to her and maybe her yeah. post on instagram as well so yeah i'll link her post her instagram handle in the comment section thank or in the description box and i'll see you guys in my next video bye thank you